Welcome to my talk on scheduling lower bounds via n subset sum. This is a joint work with Amir Aboud from IBM Research, Carl Brinkman from Saarland University and MPI, and Dvir Shabtai from Ben Gurion University, and I'm Danny Hermelin from Ben Gurion University. Consider the following scheduling problem denoted P2 sigma UJ in standard uh, scheduling notation. Uh, in this problem, we're given a set of jobs and jobs uh, where each job has an integer processing time PJ and an integer due date DJ. And we're given an additional uh, global integer K. And uh, we want to determine whether we can schedule on these jobs on uh, two parallel identical machines uh, where at most k jobs are tardy, uh, or at most k jobs do not meet their due date. So, uh, by a schedule, what we mean here is simply partition of the jobs into uh, the two machines, so into M1 and M2. Uh, in a given schedule, the completion time of a job J, uh, CJ, is just the total processing times of all jobs uh, preceding him on the same machine, including himself. And the job uh, is tardy if its completion time is greater than its due date. So if DJ is smaller than CJ. So as an example, consider these four jobs. Uh, where the processing time of each job is represented by a square. So for instance, the blue job has a processing time of two and the purple job has a processing time of six. And in this example, all four jobs have the same due date, which is nine. And we're looking for a schedule with uh, no tardy jobs. So one possible schedule is uh, the following. We schedule the blue, red, and purple uh, jobs on one machine and the green job on the other. And in this example, uh, the purple job is tardy because it completes after the due date of uh, nine. Another possible schedule is uh, the schedule where we uh, schedule the blue and purple job on one machine and the green and red job on the other machine. And in this schedule, uh, the red job is tardy. Finally, here's an example where uh, no jobs are tardy. Uh, in this schedule, the blue and the green go on one machine and the red and purple are scheduled on the other. And uh, we can see all jobs complete before uh, the due date of nine. Lanner and Moore showed in the late 60s that you can solve this problem uh, using dynamic programming in uh, order of sigma pj times n time. So in uh, the total processing times, times the number of jobs. And if you take uh, the maximum processing time as uh, p max, uh, this uh, time complexity can also be written as uh, order of p max times uh, n square time because p max times n is uh, greater or equal to the total processing times of all jobs. Uh, despite this algorithm being uh, from the late uh, 60s, this is currently uh, the best known fastest algorithm for P2 sigma uj. On the other hand, when all uh, jobs have the same due date, and this due date is exactly half the total processing time, and no jobs are allowed to be tardy, as in our previous example. Uh, this problem is exactly the well-known partition problem, which is known to be uh, NP-hard in the weak sense. Recall that partition is the special case of the subset sum problem, where we're given a set of integers and a target T, and we want to determine whether there's a subset of these integers that sums up to T. So partition is a special case where t is exactly half the total sum of these integers. So for example, uh, if our input is the set 2, 3, 6, and 7, and the target is 9, this set could be partitioned into two uh, sets, 
both uh, summing up to the target nine. So what we previously saw is a reduction from substance sum or partition to uh, our scheduling problem, uh, where we mapped every integer to uh, the processing time of a unique job. And we set the due dates of all these jobs to uh, the target uh, of uh, the partition instance or half of the total sum of the integers. Uh, so this is a direct reduction between the two problems. And uh, as we will uh, soon see, it directly implies an SETH based door bound uh, for the problem. So as a reminder, SCTH is concerned with the uh, KSAT, uh, the problem of determining whether a KCNF formula over n variables is satisfiable. And uh, SCTH, or the strong exponential time hypothesis, uh, states that uh, for any epsilon uh, greater than zero, there exists a K uh, greater or equal to three such that KSAT cannot be solved in order of 2 to the 1 minus epsilon n uh, time. So in the previous order, we showed a reduction from KSAT to subset sum, uh, which uh, provides a tight or bound for subset sum under uh, the strong exponential time hypothesis. So what this slow bound says, basically, if uh, you have a, a for any epsilon, if you have an algorithm uh, that runs in time t to the 1 minus epsilon, then it has to pay an additional runtime of 2 to a constant fraction of n. Or in other words, there's no algorithm solving subset sum nor partition in t to the uh, 1 minus epsilon times uh, 2 to the little o of n. Now, if you combine this reduction from the, uh, with the reduction that we just saw uh, from partition to our scheduling problem, uh, you get also a tight lower bound for a P2 uh, sigma UJ under SCTH, uh, which states that P2 sigma UJ cannot be solved in time uh, order of P max to the 1 minus epsilon times uh, 2 to the little of n. And now you can replace this uh, Pmax factor uh, by the total sum of processing times, uh, but for this talk, uh, I prefer to state the lower bound uh, as the way it's stated in the slide. So on the one hand, uh, our scheduling problem has no uh, order of Pmax to the one minus epsilon times two to the little o of n uh, algorithm. Uh, under SCTH, uh, and this is uh, for every epsilon. On the other hand, if we're willing to remove this uh, 1 minus epsilon uh, exponent, uh, we do have an algorithm running in uh, Pmax times a very small polynomial in it, so only n squared. This is uh, by uh, Lawler and Moore's algorithm that we mentioned previously. So these are two uh, close bounds, uh, but there's still some uh, room between them. One might ask whether we can obtain an order of Pmax plus n algorithm, or even an order of Pmax times n algorithm. Uh, neither of these running times are uh, excluded by the lower bound, nor included in the upper bound. So just as a concrete example, consider the case where Pmax is order of n and the total processing times is uh, order of n square. So roughly all jobs have a uh, processing time of order of n. So the Lollum and Moore algorithm uh, in this case runs in order of n cube time. But an algorithm which runs in order of p max plus n or p max times n would give us uh, respectively a runtime of order of n or order of n square time, uh, both which are uh, plausible possibilities. Observe that p max plus n or p max times n are not excluded by our SCTH lower bound because Pmax can be quite large. 
could even be uh, two to the n or roughly the total processing time of all our jobs. Furthermore, if we do want to obtain a, a, such a lower bound for a, our scheduling problem, well, subset sum might not be uh, the best place to start because uh, subset sum can be solved in p max times n time. And we still don't know whether it could be solved in order of p max plus n time, but it uh, might uh, very well be. So if we go back to our reduction, we'll notice that we haven't used the entire power of our uh, scheduling problem because uh, all jobs in our reduction had the same due date. So in fact, our lower bound holds for the special case where, all, where there's just a single uh, due date. Uh, so can we do better with an arbitrary number of due dates? Can we encode a harder problem than subset sum using an arbitrary number of due dates? So the answer to this question is yes. Uh, we can encode using many due dates, many subset sum instances, or more precisely, a, a single n subset sum instance. So in n subset sum, we get several uh, instances of subset sum, uh, capital N many. And uh, we want to determine whether all of these instances are yes instances, uh, meaning for uh, whether each xi has a subset which sums up to ti. So how do we encode n subset sum or n partition? to our scheduling problem. Uh, here's an example. So here are three instances of uh, partition. And we basically do the same thing as we did for a single instance of partition before, uh, but uh, the due dates are slightly different. So for the first instance, we just encode uh, the jobs as we did before. And uh, the due date of all of these jobs is uh, uh, T1, the target of the first partition instance. Uh, we do the same thing for the second uh, partition instance, except now the due date of all of these jobs is uh, T1 plus T2. So the target, uh, the sum of targets of both the first partition instance and the second partition instance. And we continue to do this for the remaining uh, partition instances uh, so in this example, uh, these are the jobs that correspond to the third instance, and their due dates are all uh, T1 plus T2 plus T3, uh, so 21 in this example. And now it's not difficult to see that uh, the only way we can schedule all our jobs so that uh, no job is tardy, so that we have zero tardy jobs, is if all of our uh, partition instances uh, were yes instances. So if each xi could be partitioned into two sets of that sum up to uh, the target. Uh, and then uh, what we see here, all of the partition instances in our example were yes instances. Therefore, they correspond to a schedule uh, as shown below uh, where no job is started. So if we had a good lower bound for n subset sum, we'd have a good lower bound for our scheduling problem using the reduction that we just saw. Unfortunately, uh, such a lower bound under SCTH is uh, highly unlikely. This is because n subset sum and its complement uh, can be actually solved efficiently in a non-deterministic fashion. So, uh, such a problem uh, can actually be proven to not have an SETH lower bound under a similar assumption called uh, non-deterministic SETH. Uh, so we need to use a different hypothesis. So we introduce a new hypothesis, a variant of SETH, which we call for all exist SETH. Uh, this hypothesis is based on the following problem. For all exist k set uh, alpha, where alpha is a uh, number between 0 and 1. 
And the input to this problem is a KCNF formula, uh, as usual, uh, over n variables. And the question is whether for any assignment to the first alpha n variables of this formula, there exists an assignment to the remaining variables uh, such that the formula is satisfied. So one can think of this problem as going uh, one level higher in the polynomial hierarchy. And the for all exist strong exponential time hypothesis is uh, the following. For any epsilon and alpha between zero and one, there all exists some k such that uh, for all exist k sat alpha cannot be solved in two to the one minus epsilon times n time. Now this is a weaker assumption than SCTH because it implies SCTH. Uh, but we believe it's almost as plausible. So now we can finally state uh, our uh, main result of the paper. So uh, we, we can derive uh, quite a tight lower bound for n subset sum under the previous hypothesis that we just saw, the for all exist SCTH. Uh, and uh, this lower bound states that n subset sum or n partition on capital N instances, each with uh, little n number of integers and target at most t, is not solvable in time uh, order of capital N times little n plus t times uh, capital N uh, little n to the 1 minus epsilon time. And this is for any epsilon uh, greater than zero. Note that this uh, bound is tight uh, because we can solve a single subset sum instance in uh, O of uh, t plus n time. So if we just use this algorithm uh, to solve all instances separately, uh, we would get a running time of uh, capital N times N plus T times capital N which is very close to the time complexity stated in the lower bound. So if we take our new lower bound for n subset sum under uh, for all exist SCTH and uh, plug it into the previous reduction we saw from uh, n subset sum to our scheduling problem P2 uh, sigma uj, then we get a new lower bound for PT sigma uj, uh, this time under the for all exist SCTH. And uh, this lower bound states that uh, the problem cannot be solved in order of n plus p max times n to the 1 minus epsilon time for any epsilon greater than zero. So our lower bound excludes the possibility of an algorithm running in uh, order of p max plus n time. Uh, it does not uh, exclude uh, a p max times n uh, algorithm, uh, but it uh, essentially excludes anything uh, better than that. Now, a similar technique uh, works for several other scheduling problems. Uh, so here's a list of uh, eight uh, scheduling problems, which also have uh, a similar lower bound under uh, for all exist SCTH. Um, some of these are quite uh, prominent problems. The first problem is the problem of minimizing the total weighted a number of tardy jobs on a single machine. Uh, the second problem is the problem of uh, minimizing the maximum tardiness on uh, two machines. And the third problem is minimizing make span on uh, two parallel machines when uh, release times are uh, present. Um, so none of these problems admit uh, Pmax plus N algorithms, uh, and uh, essentially you cannot do better than Pmax times N. And for the last problem on this list, P2 level order Cmax, 
we actually do know of an algorithm running in Pmax times n, so uh, this lower bound is tight. Now the reductions used for uh, all these problems are uh, pretty similar to the reduction we saw before, uh, but in some cases uh, some more details uh, are needed. Um, but essentially uh, the idea is that all of these problems can encode n subset sum in a very natural manner. So to summarize, uh, we introduced a new hypothesis, a uh, variant of SETH, also related to KSAT, which we call the for all exist uh, SETH. We then used uh, this hypothesis to throw a tight lower bound for n subset sum, which essentially says that uh, you can solve n subset sum better than solving uh, each instance separately. We then used this lower bound to exclude uh, runtimes of uh, n plus uh, p max or uh, anything uh, better than p max times n for uh, several scheduling problems, including uh, the problem we discussed throughout the talk. So the natural open problem stemming from our work is to close the gap in uh, running time for all the scheduling problems we considered. So uh, as we just mentioned, all of these problems cannot be solved in P max times N to the one minus epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero. And on the other hand, they can be solved in uh, P max to times N square, uh, either directly by Lolov and Moore or a similar algorithm. So the question is whether uh, any of these problems can be solved in P max times N. And in fact, for the last problem, as we uh, previously mentioned, the answer to this question is yes. So this question is uh, basically open only for the uh, seven remaining problems on the list. So this concludes my talk. I thank you for your time and thank you for your attention.